Dahlia. How are you today? Hello, Steph. I am very well, thank you. Maybe I should say something different. I realise every week I say, I'm very well, thank you. I think I say the same as well. <laughs> My student actually said it as well in exactly the same way as me. And I thought, oh, she's listened to the podcast. Uh, yeah, I say that in lessons as well. So yeah. see if they repeat it back to me next time. Well, I am great. You're great. Great. <laughs> I'm great. See, if you say you're great, it sounds like you've got like some exciting news to share. It's true. I don't though, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's just, you know, a variation on a theme, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I've just got back from a holiday. So. Ah, oh, as usual. I can't complain. <laughs> nice. Um, But I do feel like I've been hit by a bus. Oh my God. Why? Um, just, it was an early start yesterday getting to the airport and traveling back home and all of that stuff. So. Uh, and then back to reality, back to work, back to life. Yeah, and back to the cold weather, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think I need a day to to recover. <laughs> well, hopefully our podcast will make you feel better. I'm sure I'll feel more energized once we've <laughs> once we've had a chat. I always do. Good. <laughs> well, today we're talking about British myths. No, sorry, not British myths. Myths about Britain. Well, myths about Britain that we are going to discuss and decide whether we think they're actually true or not. And we'll. Uh, if we use any interesting sounding words, which we think students will benefit from learning, we will do our best to explain the meanings. And then at the end, we'll just recap whichever words we talked about. So listen out. That's right. Yeah, listen out for them. Um, this is actually a new season. So this is season eight. And this is just the second episode. So we've got a few more to go. Um, and today, yes, the myth is there is no such thing as British food. Dun, dun, dun. British food doesn't exist. Mm -mm -mm. So this is something that mm, I've had students say to me um, many a time, not necessarily just Korean students, but students from everywhere, really. Um, I might say something about British food and they'll go, yeah, what British food or is there British food or, what, what, what? you know, they're confused. <laughs> Someone actually went so far as to say to me, why is British food so bad? Oh, God. But it was funny because she was asking me a genuine question. Nice. <laughs> but it's an interesting question because she didn't say, what is British food? She said, why is British food so bad? Which suggests that British food does exist. People just don't like it. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that person actually was eating British food because I don't think it's bad. Do you? Well, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? It can be bad, but then again, that's true for all food, isn't it? Right. It depends on who's cooking it, no? <laughs> exactly. I think perhaps the thing is with British food. Okay, so I think we've established that British food does exist. It does exist, definitely. It's just not, you know, as sought after as uh, French food or Italian food or whatever. Yeah. Because it's often quite stodgy, mm. I think it's easy for it to be bad like if stodgy food is not particularly fresh mm -hmm. if it's made of pastry and stuff like that yeah it can be dry and it can be unpleasant so I think that's partly where the bad reputation comes from perhaps yes um stodgy is a good adjective to describe a lot of British food because British food is actually quite um heavy on the stomach I guess mm. um because we use a lot of potato and pastry, pastry and butter bread, bread. Flat, yeah. yeah so obviously that sort of food and meat as well like you know red meat mm. particularly so it's not like a light meal if you know what i mean yeah. which is probably why people don't eat it that often true yeah at least i don't but i do know older people like the older generation especially like people I'm going to say 60 plus maybe 70 plus yeah in england they might prefer to eat traditional British dishes every day for their dinner. That's true, yeah. And it's funny because stodgy is actually, well, the meaning is not a positive one, is it? Stodgy essentially means too heavy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I actually really like stodgy food. You do? Unfortunately, because it's not very healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it depends whether the stodgy food is flavoursome. Yeah. Um, you know, like if they're using like herbs and, you know, seasoning and stuff like that and tastes really nice like there's full of flavor mm. or whether the person who's cooking it forgets to <laughs> add any seasoning yeah. and then it's a bit it can be a bit bland I guess I think that's actually why people think it's not great yeah it's because 
of that because there are, it lacks herbs and spices, which is fair enough, to be honest, because if you look at, I remember I went to Malaysia and the food there was just so, my God, so many flavours. It was amazing. Really? And yeah, just so mm. many flavours all together, like coconut and spice. And then came back to England and it was like, yeah, oh, potatoes. <laughs> You know, our traditional British food doesn't include many herbs and spices. I mean, mm. salt and pepper, obviously, but we don't really use chilli and no, even garlic, I don't think. I mean, Not really? Yeah, like it, you don't need that many ingredients. No, I'd say herbs are used when uh, people make roast dinners, like on a Sunday with yeah. um, rosemary and what rosemary and lamb go together. Yeah. If you're addressing the uh, meat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think that's a more like, elevated roast let's say so is it i grew up a vegetarian so i don't know oh did you oh okay wow mm. as i was talking about like the older generation they might be eating you know british food often they might not add as many seasonings as like a it's younger true. person might make when they're cooking the british food do you know what i mean it's true actually i remember because i was a vegetarian we didn't have traditional christmas dinners and then when i became an adult one year i thought let's do it yeah so i made turkey which was a very weird experience for me and obviously i love cooking so i looked up you know recipe online and i did realize that it was a little bit untraditional we did Pear and cider mm, wow. turkey. So we covered it in, like went to the shop and found some special ciders, which I know nothing about. Um, got these special pears and I thought not many people would. Was it good? It was really good. Nice. I think it was turkey. It was some kind of meat. So I don't even know which type of meat it was, but <laughs> it was really good. Well, turkey is traditionally eaten on Christmas Day, but not everyone likes turkey. I'm not a big fan of turkey. I find it a bit dry. It can be dry. But that sounds great. I would say like mixing the mixture of like fruit and meat. Mm, yeah. It works. Well, some people think it's uh, bland, which is a word we used before. Yeah. Which means without flavour, basically. Yeah. A bit boring tasting. But not in a good way. Technically, water has no flavour, but it's not bland because it's not supposed to have flavour. Yes, so we use the word bland for like a dish that somebody might have prepared, but maybe there's not much flavour in it. It doesn't really taste like much, so you would say mm. it's a bit bland. It needs some seasoning, some, I don't know, something to make it taste better. <laughs> yeah, and flavoursome just means having flavour, Yeah, obviously. I would say it's the opposite of bland, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So some, we, you mentioned a couple of dishes. So one of them would be like a roast. Mm. That's a very traditional British thing. It's often eaten on a Sunday. Yeah. You can eat it whenever you want, really. Mm. But it's traditionally on, eaten on a Sunday. And we do eat that sort of thing on Christmas Day. Yeah. And a roast here is a, a noun. Yes. So traditionally to roast something means to cook something in the oven, not cakes that's baking that's right um but we call that meal where we have either roast beef roast chicken roast lamb roast turkey is that right anything else what else can you roast i think pork maybe i guess pork yeah so we call this meal a roast yeah and it's probably because we roast every we put everything yeah. in the oven when we make it so we have the meat we have the potatoes the vegetables yeah mostly in the oven we cook it all in the oven and the, it's important that the potatoes are roasted yeah, they have to be nice and crispy. <laughs> and you know what? I will say one thing. Because I grew up a vegetarian, I didn't really, I never really experienced eating roasts. Okay, yeah. And so I didn't really get all the hype. Like, I didn't understand why people were so excited about it. And then I remember I had some really amazing crispy roast potatoes. Yeah. I think they were cooked in like goose fat or something ridiculous. Mm. And they were so good. And I thought, okay, now I, now I get why people love this. <laughs> It is an important element of a roast to yeah. have roast potatoes. Although some people do make mashed potato with it, no, but I just you think you've that. got to have roast potatoes. <laughs> what other dishes are they? We mentioned pastry. So I guess pies, like people eat pie and mash, for example, mashed potato. Yep. A lot of snack based things, like um, one of my favourites is um, a scotch egg. Oh, yes, a scotch egg. I wonder if our students and listeners have ever had or seen a scotch egg before. Well, it's funny because if they Google it now, they're probably going to see all the articles about the hoo-ha in COVID. Do you remember? No, I don't. There was some big deal because, you know, we weren't allowed to eat food in restaurants yes. because of uh, we had to be in isolation. Right. So there was a big question about what is takeaway food and what is not. Yeah. And then there was some pubs saying that the government was saying that the scotch eggs were not classed as takeaway food or this and that. There was just a lot of talk about whether we're allowed to eat scotch eggs or not in pubs. <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah, it was a bit ridiculous. It does sound a bit a bit petty, but yeah. But for those of you who don't know what a Scotch egg is, it's actually a boiled egg, mm-hmm. and the egg is kind of covered in sausage meat. Mm. Obviously, it's cooked, um, and then it's coated in breadcrumbs, so it's crispy on the outside, and then so you have to cut through it, and you'll find a layer of pork, basically pork sausage and egg. Yeah. And you can eat it with your hands, I guess. You can. And this is one of the things where you often find these in the refrigerated section in a supermarket Mm. as a snack. And I assume if lots of people picked one up, they'd hold this heavy, cold thing in their hand and think, this is a bit weird. It is. But I had a friend who owned a restaurant in England and um, he tried to make kind of gourmet English food. Mm -hmm. And he handmade and made a scotch egg and cooked it fresh. And it tasted so good, like freshly fried, yeah. really good quality sausage meat. So I think it does matter. The quality matters. Yeah, for sure. You know, if you have bad quality food, you're going to think English food is terrible. Yeah, I mean, I think with scotch eggs, it's got to be a bit warm yeah. as well. So, you know, and the same with sausage rolls. Like sausage rolls are very oh, common here as well. Yeah. But you can buy them, as you say, in the supermarket and they'll be like, cold in the fridge and I just think that's not doing it justice it's true yeah you get a nice hot one and they just remind you of birthday parties don't they yeah because they're such an easy thing to just plop on a plate at a kid's birthday party or something like that so our advice then would be try and get like fresh snacks you know like go to a bakery you know like good quality stuff like don't just go to the supermarket and buy stuff from the fridge that is traditional British food that's what I think. Yeah, or get a microwave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, it looks like we are nearly out of time, so maybe we should recap um, some of the words that we used today. Mm-hmm. So the first one was stodgy. Indeed. Stodgy, that's an adjective. Yeah, negative adjective. And then what did we say? Bland. Bland, yeah. Which is an adjective as well. Exactly. And we said also an adjective. It's similar to flavourless, mm. meaning without flavour. Yeah. And we said the opposite of that is flavoursome. Indeed. Exactly. Um, so those are all adjectives. And we also said... Roast. Roast. We use the word roast, which is a noun in this case. Yeah. And we can use it as a verb, to roast vegetables. Exactly. That's right. Well, on a Sunday, you want to have a Sunday roast. That's what we call it. Mm. Yeah. Sunday roast. I wonder if people still do that, do they? I think they do, yeah. I think... Um, I think people do and near where I live there's a pub that does well they call it a carvery carvery classic yeah it's like um like a buffet of roasted meat so you can choose which meat you would like with your roast because they carve the meat right yeah they carve it in front of you like they cut it in front of you and then you can put your roast potatoes and vegetables on the plate but they do it on a Sunday but they also do it on a Wednesday and a Friday so that's to get people in the pub isn't it yeah <laughs> So if you fancy a roast on a Wednesday, you can go there. <laughs> um, anyway, I think that's all we've got time for for today. Yeah. But we'll be back again soon with another myth to bust. So lovely to speak to you and uh, take care. I'll see you next time. Yep, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.